Yes guys, you're reading the title properly. I did switch to the iPhone 12 Pro Max for two months. And some of you are going, Thunder E, you are an Android user. Yes, yes, I am, I know. But again, thank you for watching this video. And if you're joining us for the first time, definitely hit the subscribe button and the notification icon. Now, I did switch over to an iPhone 12 Pro Max for two months, but I'm also someone that carries two devices at the same time. So it was a bit easier for me. I still had my Android device, but I did most of my work on the 12 Pro Max. Now you're wondering, okay, why the 12 Pro Max? Why not the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, or 12 mini? Well, first off, I learned from a video I did uh, last year on the iPhone 12 uh, Pro and Pro Max 5G that the Pro Max was the way to go. Because using 5G on this device, one thing I did notice was battery life. And that's something that of course I'm quite concerned about because I'm a, I'm a power user. It doesn't matter what device I use. But also, you know, screen size. It's a big device and I like large devices and honestly, everyone should have a large device. Now, the screen size is 6.7 inches and for me, this does a really good job at allowing me to do a lot of things together at once, which is great. I also like the fact that it's got a bigger battery. I also like the fact that we know that it has six gigabytes of RAM. So the things I like to do like gaming and all this kind of functionality, I can do more of that with a device this size. I'm okay with the size, I'm okay with the grip. I do like the design, I think it's much better. I love the fact that when you place it on a table, it can stand on its own, freestanding, which is nice. And I will preface this, I did get this device from Apple. Uh, they are not paying me in any way, if some people are thinking that way uh, with this video, but I wanted to see what that experience was for an Apple user. Now, Daniel, who's behind the camera, he's an Apple user. At least he switched over to an iPhone using the iPhone 12 mini, and he loves it, he enjoys it. He actually showed me a few tricks recently to use this device. But I wanna start off with the first thing that I enjoy the most, which of course is gaming. How does gaming handle on the iPhone 12 Pro Max? So as you guys know, gaming is very important for me and it doesn't matter what device I use, I like to do a lot of gaming, especially mobile gaming on, on the go. Now on the iPhone, gaming is threefold. Uh, you can play games through Apple Arcade, which has a lot of good quality games, uh, maybe not the games that I would like to play all the time, but it's a nice subscription service that I've come to enjoy. Honestly, I thought it was gonna be terrible, but uh, it works well. And again, the larger real estate here does a really good job. Then of course, you can play standard games off the App Store. Uh, and of course, you know, in my case, it's a lot of uh, PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty Mobile, no Fortnite. If you have it already on your device, then you're lucky. But being able to play those games and play it effectively has been, uh, uh, it's been really good. Now, the one thing uh, I will mention is that the iPhone, while it can play games really well, it runs really, really hot. I mean, it runs very, very hot uh, when you're playing games for a long period of time. I would say, honestly, within 15 to 30 minutes, it starts raising temperatures that are just super high. So it's something to take note and something I don't like, especially when I play on long sessions. So it makes sense using something like this. This is the Backbone controller, which uh, I have a video on my gaming channel, Board Gaming, go check it out. I do like it, works well for the iPhone. Now, the third part, of course, is game streaming services like, you know, uh, Xbox uh, Game Pass or Stadia or GeForce Now. Uh, now, you can't play off apps directly off the App Store for those services, but you can use web apps. Now, I've been using Stadia's web app. I'm waiting for Xbox uh, uh, Game Pass. And Stadia web app works pretty well through Safari. You can pin it on your desk. Top. It's a bit of an annoyance, but I honestly say it works well. It's a good workaround. And even though Apple has tried to limit that progression in some form or fashion, uh, I'm glad there's just some way to make it work. The gaming experience on the iPhone is really good. You know, a lot of people ask, what about graphically intensive games like Genshin you know, Impact, which uh, yes, you can run that effectively at almost 60 frames per second constantly. Those are the kind of things you'll see on the iPhone. Audio is also really good to hit the kind of sound you're looking for. And I think in general, if you're a gamer, you would like the experience on here. Now, before I talk about other things, I'm just gonna continue my gameplay session because I just died in Call of Duty Mobile and I need my ranking to go up.
So using the iPhone day to day, there's some things that really work well on the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the iPhone in general. Uh, I'll start off simply with the camera. Now the iPhone takes some really solid pictures and if I were to compare it to say, like my Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, it depends on which things. Ultra I think does well with the ultra wide, the zoom. The iPhone does really good job with portrait photos, but the images still look really, really good. But when it comes to video, and of course I make YouTube videos, right? Um, this is where the iPhone takes that extra step. Uh, video recording on this device is really good, but you're, some of you will say, well, okay, you can do this on the 12 mini or 12 pro. That comes back to battery life as well. So if I'm recording 4K 60 for an extended period of time, then I can do that much longer on the 12 Pro Max. Plus, I've got a, a bigger screen as a viewfinder. Uh, if I want to actually try and do something cinematic, I can see what I'm doing. I gauge it much better on the device. But the camera is really, really solid. Now, when you move over to the software, uh, you know, iOS runs pretty well. Uh, it's pretty smooth. There's some things I don't like, I can get into it and I will get to it later on in this video, but I wanna talk about the software, meaning iOS and of course apps as well. Um, iOS is a smooth piece of software uh, and I do like the inclusion of the app library on here, which is more like the app tree on Android, so I'm using it more in that fashion. I like the fact that it tries to group things and guess the way your thing should be, like in social, entertainment, creativity. It misses a few things, but it's, it's still quite knowledgeable for me to find the things I'm looking for, right? You've got your uh, notification center, which honestly needs to be fixed. I am tired of swiping through every notification I get, which is quite a lot. And uh, you know, that kind of thing needs to be sorted out. But when you come to the applications, this is where you have a lot of benefits using an iPhone. So for instance, I'm using an app called Clubhouse. It's a new social network. I'm not getting paid for it or anything, but I'm, I'm enjoying using it. And I can only use it on the iPhone. So you get that quite a bit where certain things work better on an iPhone. So apps have early access on the iPhone like Clubhouse. I also have certain apps that just work well like say Instagram, where certain things in Instagram just work better on the iPhone than on an Android device, even my Galaxy. Those are the kind of things that frustrate me as an Android user and coming over and using the iPhone more, I'm going like, ah, come on guys, like seriously. The ability to use the software quite effectively because of the closed ecosystem says a lot about what Apple can do. Now, you have different accessories you can use with the iPhone. And of course, you know, you've seen my videos with the uh, AirPods Pro, as well as also the AirPods, uh, AirPods Max. Now, both of them are great audio solutions uh, for the iPhone. I wish I could use my other headphones that I have over there, uh, but I don't get the full benefits from it. As an Apple user, I can see the beauty of having that connected ecosystem of saying, oh, I can switch from one device to the other, you know, like my MacBook or my iPad, and I don't have those things, or at least I don't own, personally own those things. Uh, but I can see the appeal there, but for me, it's really not that appealing. So um, if, you know, if someone were to ask me, how do I feel about the connectivity between all those devices? I'll say, well, it's nice. It's just not for me. So you've heard me say a lot of great things about the iPhone 12 Pro Max, uh, but here are a few things that I hope Apple changes. Software, hardware, that kind of thing, right? So first thing um, I wanna talk about is battery life. It is definitely much better on the 12 Pro Max, but as a power user, I've realized that it still doesn't last me as long as it should. And that's something that I would like to see increase. I just like more battery life. Um, and for the things I do, especially when editing video on the device and moving forward, which is something I actually forgot to mention earlier is the fact that I do a lot of editing of my uh, TikToks and my reels on my iPhone because of course of that camera. So I really would like longer battery life to take more advantage um, of those kind of functionalities on there. When it comes to software though, I like the improvements that you know, they've added to iOS. I like the fact that in the camera app, you know, with Apple Pro Raw, there's a little raw button you can turn on and off. There are more features and swipe through. I like that they've done a lot of things we've complained about in the past. I'm still irked the fact that I cannot customize my home screen. I am sorry. When people have the brand new home screens where they're throwing in uh, widgets so they can move their 
app icons around. That's just silly. I'm sorry, it's silly. I just want you to be able to manually move an icon from left to right and keep it there. That is something I just cannot do on the iPhone. And for me, it frustrates me because I actually want to clear the whole home screen and I just want to see my Batman wallpaper and that is just me. And by the way, if you want to see, get this wallpaper, I have a link for you guys down below. Those are, those are some of the things I, I don't like. Another thing to mention is that notch. Um, I know this is the third generation of the notch. Uh, you know, we had it with the iPhone 10, 11, and now 12. I wish it was thinner. I wish it wasn't there at all. Uh, it, as much as a lot of people will say, well, it doesn't bother me. It does bother me when I game. It does bother me when I watch video. And I tend not to watch a lot of video on this. I will go back to my Android device here just to watch video, just because of that notch. It's still a bother. And it may not be for, for other people, but it's just something that concerns me. Uh, USB Type-C, that's something I would like to see as well. And then finally, MagSafe. Now, MagSafe is one that I've discussed quite a bit with Daniel, and he's probably he's laughing right there behind the camera, because honestly, I, I like and I don't like it at the same time. I think MagSafe is, is great, and you have a bunch of different options for MagSafe. So you've got the standard MagSafe charger from Apple, and you've also got like a third-party charger from Speedium, which by the way, is about half the price. So use the link down below to pick that up if you're thinking about getting MagSafe. Uh, and also you do have the, uh, the dual MagSafe charger, which I kind of like because if you have an Apple Watch, you can use that with it. And it simply folds up through in your back pocket or in your front pocket and your jeans, and you can go anywhere with it. What I don't understand with MagSafe, or at least for me, just doesn't really fit, is that it's basically wired charging with a magnet that is slower. That's what I don't get. And um, to me, I'd rather just have USB Type-C, which we don't have on the iPhone yet, and I don't even know if Apple will give that to us. We might just go to MagSafe fully for the iPhone 13 uh, this year. But that's something that I wrestled with with MagSafe, where I do like the ability of having MagSafe behind my device, I can dangle it around if I want to. I can game more effectively with it. That is very true because it doesn't block, of course, my hands while gaming, but it's also slower and I lose more energy that way. Plus, since Apple has taken away the charger out of the box, I understand that, but to use MagSafe, you need a 20 watt charger. So if you're coming from a much older iPhone to the 12, 12 series, you still have to buy a brand new charger. And of course, by the way, I have links for those chargers as well that are just 20 bucks in the description. I know it sounds like I'm selling you a lot of stuff and telling you this or that about the device. I do like the iPhone 12 Pro Max, I honestly do. I think it's a solid device and I like the changes Apple has made. Has Apple made me switch all the way through? No, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not one of those YouTubers who tell you, oh, I fully switched for a year. That's just complete bullshit, at least for me. What I will tell you is that I am enjoying the experience and I think that they've done a good job. They haven't gotten me there fully, but it also means that you know Android devices will have to pick up the pace and do things better. And I think that is what we want is competition at the end of the day. You know, I want to get that kind of camera fl fluidity on my Galaxy devices, on my OnePluses. I want to be able to have that you know, sweet connectivity between the accessories, which we're getting, it's getting better on Android, Still not as fast as we have here. I want to also have that smoother motion with software, which we have with some Android devices like the Pixel devices and the One Pluses, and even the Galaxy is picking up. But those are the things that we can, these devices can learn from each other. And I'm glad to see that, you know what, Apple is stepping up their game and they are pushing the boundaries and their processes are doing well. And there's a lot of things to like on this. So if you ask me, you know, should I get an iPhone 12 Pro Max? I would say yes. If you like the ecosystem, you like using Apple devices, but you also want a device that has a really good camera um, and also some really good battery life, at least for the iPhone series, then definitely pick it up. As for me, that was my two month run. I will give you updates when I get to uh, longer periods of time as you use, use this device. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit long and chatty, but I think that we've all learned something new today with uh, the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So if you have any questions, or any comments, let me know guys. And uh, thank you for watching this video. And Daniel is tired of standing behind the camera and looking at me like, just stop. Have a good night and enjoy your entertainment.